Welcome to the boat yard. This is the place to bring your boat so you can work on it, repair it, and as well, it keeps my boat much safer during hurricane season. Now in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at some of the damage that got done in this last year and see what I can do about it and what things I'm just not gonna worry about and keep sailing. For me, I want my boat to be moving and going, not sitting in a boat yard because it's not perfect. Perfection kills boats. Let's take a look. For the past decade, I've been solo traveling around the world facing all of life's adventures head on, locking horns and creating harmony with nature and disrupting the mold to help others experience life in its richest, rawest form. Welcome to my life of adventure. Let's dive on in. All right, first thing you might notice is some rusting that happened on the side and behind my bow shield. I developed my own personal ethos at a boatyard, which is if it works and it looks good enough from a drone, it's good to go. I'm gonna be sticking with that again because again, I don't wanna spend the rest of my life in a boatyard shining this boat, making it perfect. A lot of people make their boat so it looks great at a dock. I don't go to a dock. So for me, something like this, I'm just not gonna worry about. This still protects the bow of my boat from the anchor when I pull it up. And you can see on it some of the scratches that it's put up with. So the bow shield worked and it did its job just fine. Now moving on to the hull, you're gonna see these little like white patches here. Basically what you're looking at is the Seahawk paint mostly came off. Two things I think I did incorrectly here. One is I could have put, I think a fourth or a fifth layer of paint on, that would have helped. But I think mainly what I did wrong was I let the bottom growth accumulate a bit too much, particularly when I was in St. Martin. Um, it was a great place for bottom growth to accumulate, barnacles and all that type of stuff. but. I got kind of lazy and let it really get on. And you'll have to see that in a future video where, I mean, it was horrible what I had to clean. So these little things you can see right here, these are all the backs of barnacles, uh, as well as all these other spots that kind of gripped on. And then when I went to shave them off, they took away a lot of the paint with them. So what you're seeing right here is an epoxy primer barrier coat. This is Interlux 2000, pretty much widely used on all fiberglass boats to protect the fiberglasses behind it from water intrusion, because that's what I did mostly in my seven month refit, is I had like 200 blisters. Now this boat is all nice and smooth, so all I really need to do now is take a sander to this for a little bit, sand off you know, some things and just get it ready to be painted. It's really not a hard thing to do. Um, I'm obviously gonna do this one myself, I did it the last time and it works, so I'm gonna be doing that throughout the whole of the boat. Taking a look at the keel, my keel is not lead, it's cast iron. I would prefer to have a lead keel, but hey, every boat's a compromise. So I can see a little bit of rust here and a little bit, oh actually that's not rust, that's actually some of the glue. So it's mostly right there. It's just one or two spots, it's super minor. But still, what I'll do is I'll sand that down nicely, put an austeric acid on it, and then I'll put a little bit more of the epoxy primer and then the bottom paint, and that'll be good to go. This was quite a mission to do. I actually had to do it like two or three times. I kept messing it up. So I'll be happy once this is finished. Now, moving on to the bottom as well. You see this? Why is it like this? Because this is where the strap was on the bottom of the boat when they lifted me up. This is where the pressure washer could not reach. So this stuff, you know, it's kind of gross, but I'll probably just kind of chisel it away with a paint scraper. And then again, I'll be sanding it. So bottom painting here, really not that difficult. Moving on to the propeller. Now my propeller is old and has a bit of electrolysis as well as I really neglected the zinc here. This should have been replaced probably a couple months earlier. And the final day I was about to haul out, the, uh, the propeller was unevenly balanced. There was one clam that had grown like, where is he? Right there, right there. So when I went to use the propeller and it was spinning at, you know, a thousand, ro uh, thousand rotations per minute, it made this thing off balance and so it vibrated a bit. No problem, I put in a neutral, I went down, I cleaned it and I tried to chisel a little bit here, but the zinc needs to be replaced. That's super easy, I can do that in probably 10 minutes. The propeller itself is another story though. The propeller is a bit too old. I really was supposed to replace it pretty much by now. A professional propeller shop told me, hey, you'll probably get about a year out of it if you're lucky. That was a little more than a year ago. So this is something I need to think about and how I do. Getting a new propeller and sourcing it is all that there is to it. There is no real work to be done. I take this off here, I bend these flanges and then I put a little bar here so this can't rotate. I undo this screw, this slides right off, and then I slide a new one on. It's really a simple process, but what's not simple is actually sourcing and finding a new propeller. So what I would like to do if I can 
is find a propeller that actually feathers or folds. There's feathering propellers where they'll collapse back like a squid. I'm not a huge fan of those ones, but they do work well. Uh, what I prefer is probably a max prop that where it'll actually engage into the water like this, so you have no resistance. This is great mostly for your sailing speed. When I sail, this right here is all this drag through the water. You imagine how much drag this is as you're just trying to move along. You hope the propeller gets stuck like this, so at least some of it doesn't quite drag, but it's more often gonna be somewhere here. So a max prop or another feathering prop would be really, really good to get. That probably, I think it's like three, four, or even $5,000 for those. They're really expensive and uh, we'll see. There's probably a good chance that I'm gonna keep this propeller and just kind of run the, run the gauntlet with it as I sail back up to St. Martin. I'm probably ended up doing sort of like two refits, a mini one here for just a couple months, get back out sailing, enjoy the Caribbean. And then when I get up to St. Martin, which just has more resources, I'll do more of a refit up there. So this is merely cosmetic, but you can see that this line that I put here, which really just makes it look nice, has really gone away. I'm probably gonna just remove all of this because it's just like a tape is all that it is. And it just didn't get a very good bite right here. So I'm probably just gonna remove all this the whole way around. And instead of having this stripe here, my boat is just gonna be a dark blue and then this iceberg blue. But so long as we're over here, we can see that we've got this. That's a little blister. Those really aren't a problem. Some people lose their minds and they get everyone out. I'm probably not gonna do a thing about that. I don't like the way it looks, but if I just don't look at it, it's fine. And to me, that just sounds like much more happiness. Uh, as we keep going back here, you can really see, yeah, look at that. It's, it's gone. Um, and I could also just get some more of this stuff, sand it and put a new one on, and maybe that's a good option as well. Going on further here, we're gonna take a look at the rudder. Rudder looks great, no growth back in here. Um, there was some, but I had the guy put the pressure washer, really dig in there. My steerage still feels really good, so no damage there. As well, I didn't hit anything, so, rudder's still good and that's obviously very important. Now, moving to the back of the boat here, we've got the swim platform, the boss, and the lights. Now, the boss is great. Nothing wrong there, which is good because it's the most essential part of all this. But obviously, my swim platform is gonna need some work. Yeah, there's a lot of ugly going on here. Let's break it down. We'll start out with the swim platform lights. I absolutely love having these here. At night, I turn them on and a menagerie of tiny deep sea creatures comes up and it's always different wherever I am throughout the world. I, I only wanna double down on this. I want more and brighter lights, really. Uh, I started this last season with four lights, two blue, two white. Uh, these inner ones are the white ones, outer ones are the blue ones. This one, I guess, got cracked. The first one died within like less than a month. Second one, about a month, and then the third one, maybe a few more months. And then this last one here, I had probably for like eight or nine months. And even just having that one, being able to turn that on, it's nice for getting in and out of the dinghy as well. I mean, there's practical uses for it, for finding my boat at night, but really I just like it because it attracts really cool sea creatures. So I'm gonna have to, because these are all epoxied in here, I'm probably just gonna take like a chisel or, yeah, I mean a straight up like chisel, and I'm just gonna just crack into it. As well with that, you'll notice this, this piece here that comes out. This is called a boss. I made this this last season because the boat, in order to put hinges here, the boat curves in the back this way and it also curves that way. So how do you get a straight angle on it? Well, you put this one board back there and then I filled the rest in with other oak and then I kind of just epoxied it in. I didn't actually glass it in. Uh, and that's something also I did wrong on here. So epoxy or resin is sort of the glue. Fiberglass is the mesh and that's actually what has the strength. If I had done that, this thing would still be in one piece. So it's a bit of a lesson learned there. Thankfully though, to redo this is as easy as undoing these screws, putting it down, tracing it on some other plywood, and then actually glassing that one over. And that's exactly what I plan on doing. So that'll be a great little project for me to do. And then I'll have a brand new swim platform, but it still works as it is, though the grit started to run out, which I'll show you on the top in a second. Um, as well, while I'm at it glassing that, I'm probably gonna glass this as well, just to give it a little more protection because that's a lot of thick wood in there with through bolts. If water starts to get into that, that becomes a major problem and potentially a structural problem. Versus if the swim platform breaks, I mean, at the end of the day, if I needed it off right now, I would just take my circular saw and I'd just go meow, and I could probably get it off in, I don't know, five minutes. But I got so much use out of the swim platform and I keep getting use out of it. Being able to like drag your feet in the water when you're sailing or just getting in and up for spearfishing. If you watch my videos, you see me filleting fish back there. 
this changed my boat drastically, and I can't imagine my boat without it. And to give you an idea of how good swim platforms are, I gotta show you guys this, this is really cool. This neighbor next to me, he's got this huge reverse transom that comes way out, but he wants to have a swim platform. So what did he do? He's made this hole here that can actually drop down, and he can have a swim platform right there. So yeah, so a swim platform really changes what a boat can do, and in my opinion, a boat is for getting not just out and crossing the water, but getting on, in, and under the water. People that have boats that have this huge reverse transom that don't go in, they just kind of look at the ocean, I don't get that, I'm not about that. I want to be in it every day. Let's take a look from another angle. So this is what my swim platform looks like when it's down, and I'm usually right here pretty much when I'm in the water anyway, swimming underneath it. I did put that stainless steel rub rail, and that definitely saved it. I think it would have cracked a lot sooner. But basically, all that happened with this is it had a super thin shell of that epoxy glue, you could call it, sort of. Imagine like the shell of maybe like a candy. You know, certain candies just have like a thin shell and then a gooey inside. It's kind of the same thing. Once that shell got pierced, water got in and it began delaminating the rest of the glue as the wood expanded as it accepted that water. It's kind of a bummer. I could have definitely uh, kept it going a bit longer, but I knew I was gonna be here. I said, you know what? I'd rather just use this thing and let it be broken and let it get ruined than actually try to preserve it because I know I want to redo it anyway. I almost forgot that little beauty right there. Come on, come on, come on. I don't want you to sail, I want you to go. Oh, oh. Kind of funny, accidents happen, so no big deal. He's gonna come back and buff that out for me, and he's a great guy, it's just, you know, things happen. But this is kind of a good example of what can go wrong and the little bits of damage you can accumulate in one year of, uh, you know, sailing and cruising hard. That really is the point of this video, you guys. I wanna show you guys just what it looks like after just one year. So you can imagine certain boats that don't get hauled out and that keep cruising nonstop. Most people don't usually cruise for more than six months. Even that can be a long time because they have to get that time off from work. And they also have to be physically fit enough for that. Most people will go into a marina, they'll relax, or they'll kind of be in one place for a long time. Given I was on anchor in Marigo in St. Martin for maybe as much as like three weeks in one spot, but as I was exploring Exploring out and around. And as you guys have seen some of my videos, in that case, then I took my dinghy around the whole island. There's still adventures to be had. It's just cool to know that your boat can get wherever you need it to be. And here you can see the main part of the damage, the swim platform. What actually happened to start this whole thing was there was like a rod or a stick or something that I had right here. And when I went to hinge up the swim platform, it was all that leverage on this one point right here. So it just kind of bent in like right, right about here. It just kind of bent that in. And it was tiny. It was only maybe like that big, that little bit right there. But that was enough with neglect for it to grow and grow and grow. And you see now how it's delaminating and the, the wood is all rotten. This isn't marine grade plywood. I use regular Home Depot plywood. A lot of people could call me crazy for that, but you know, considering the prices and as well, marine grade ply just didn't feel as strong to me. And it was my mindset that if I can keep the water out, I'll have a stronger platform. And technically I was correct. So I have no supports going across this way, but obviously this huge boss gives me so much support here as well as this here. The thing doesn't bow at all. I'll have three people out on this thing. It's no worries. Let's take a look at that real quick, by the way. So you have a U-bolt right there comes up over my shoulder, comes to here to give partial support here to this beefy, beefy uh, bimini structure that I've got. This thing was custom welded for me and then it took me about six days, one day for each pad to install it. It was very, very difficult. But then it actually goes right here to my old stanchions. And you can see here where I trimmed this so I had a more exposed, more open back of the boat. Older boats seem to be very claustrophobic and, you know, tight in, you look at a newer boat and like the whole back opens up. The whole back is a swim platform. That's smart. I think that makes the boat just so much more usable. So this is how I would be normally. And it's nice that I can have my dinghy up. And this is actually the low side. If I usually will sit over here so I get a little more space because I keep the dinghy tilted. So that way rain always comes out. Um, but obviously it works just great. And so long as I'm up here, I might as well also show you guys my, uh, my outboards. My outboard was with me this whole season, but then I got the brand new high field dinghy only in, I think, the last maybe three months that I've had this thing. Absolutely love it. If you guys haven't yet, check out the full video I did on this whole dinghy setup and I explain why it's the best. So this is the Yamaha Enduro 15 horsepower. It's a two-stroke engine. It's known to be the best motor. I think I have the best dinghy as well. That's up for debate, but nobody debates that the Yamaha Enduro is kind of the motor. Um, a little bit of the damage I did do is I think I hit the propeller just one too many times. So this is actually a brand new propeller. Fortunately, I was teaching Dea how to drive the dinghy 
and I wasn't paying enough attention and I should have been and she wasn't paying enough attention thinking that I would have said something so she she managed to clip the bottom as you can see how the propeller just barely goes past the fin sometimes wasn't a terrible hit it's nothing I'm really gonna worry about I might even actually, I might do absolutely nothing to this yeah I think I'm gonna do absolutely nothing to this um, obviously the zinc needs to be replaced that's looking pretty bad um, and you can see just a little bit of the scum that kind of gets hung onto here it's just kind of the nature of the beast. You can also see here this stuff um, and how easily it comes off. So I'll give this dinghy a nice clean. I might actually instead ask one of the guys here if I can borrow the pressure washer. I think the pressure washer would probably clean this stuff off like nearly instantaneously. Again, this is just some of the damage you can get in one year. Moving up here into the cockpit, can I even just start out back here. Some of the hinges got a little bit rusty really a big deal some of the grit kind of came out because I did put some grit into this but it's also got gel coat underneath it so it's actually just fine the way it is I kind of prefer it this way obviously the painting I did worked but you know it's got a little bit of stains to it a few places you can see where it actually rubbed through maybe I'll paint that up again maybe I probably won't it's just if it looks good from a drone everything else held together really good I, I didn't expect anything less this whole bimini structure that I built a couple years ago just I don't maintain it, I don't touch it. Maybe once in a while I try to like scrub the panels. I think maybe twice in the past, what was that, however long I was out for, you know, 396 days. Everything works great. I've also got this LED light in here. Now that it's a weather waterproof weathering one, that works awesome. The electricity just always was flowing. I didn't have any problems with uh, my solar the whole time I was out. So I was extremely happy about that. The structure held on very strong, so we're really good there. Uh, nothing to do with the steerage has been bad or anything else up here. The autopilot sort of actually got less squeaky, which is really nice. I guess I get kind of lucky with that sometimes where something that used to be kind of broken got a little bit better. My two instruments here as well as my uh, VHF, nothing wrong there with that. All the winches stayed good. I put in new lines this year. I guess I could look at that. The lines obviously got a little bit older, but I mean, nothing bad there. These were brand new when I left um, and they still look great and they've still got, you know, their normal probably two, three, four more years, whatever it is, uh, however I do stuff. Uh, going up the front of the boat here, jack line's still great. Uh, my halyards are still looking really good. You can see I lost a little bit of the paint here. So yeah, I mean, you know, maybe I'll spend a day with a little like little sander and just sand a few places and then put some more of the paint on. I use a really, really common paint. Um, I probably won't, not unless it starts leaking or something. Uh, I will say the Dodger. The Dodger has been a bit of a problem. Uh, I had somebody help me to re-sew it and make it a little bit better, but it honestly really didn't work out. I do have future plans to glass this entire thing. Literally taking this exact shape, pouring resin on it, becomes a shell, and then adding fiberglass and probably some honeycombing to make it thicker. Uh, it would be cool to be able to stand on this thing or maybe even just to glass it over to make it 100% waterproof. And also that way I never have to take it down. If I do that, it's gonna be a bit more of a project and I probably would do that in St. Martin, but it works as it is right now, as well as as a connector piece. So not really too much to change there. It's a little bit of chafing that's happened kind of here and there, but you know, it's, it's nothing major. It's nothing you can see here, a little bit of chafe. Um, there's nothing that really matters. I would like to glass this in so I could also put panels like right here and probably one more going back. If I had two panels each side, then the cockpit I could kind of guarantee to keep dry during most any rainstorm and that would be pretty nice. Daya really enjoyed sleeping out in the cockpit even when it rained. So I see that as a potential just to improve it a little bit and the storage space to put, you know, some fabric really won't take up much. I can afford that on the boat. Moving up more along the boat, uh, we can see my teak handrail. Definitely lost that nice color that I gave it with the teak oil. That's really not that hard to redo. I can just teak oil it, it just would take some time. I probably won't do that though, because that takes time and time is time not spent having fun sailing. I don't want to do that. Moving even further up here, really no damage anywhere else. The halyards are all great, which is really good. The whisker pole was new this year. I didn't really use it a ton. Uh, the last time I used it just before coming down here, I had it back a little too far. So it ended up actually chafing against this. But hey, you know what, stuff happens. Definitely something I do want to keep an eye on up here is my chain. This was brand new chain when I left and it definitely doesn't look great. I don't like the look of that link. It's still holding me on just fine, but it's something that I'm gonna wanna look into. I think what I'm most likely doing, gonna do is called end over end. And I'm actually gonna do a little bit of, to it today just before I leave. But this is my chain. You can see it's all pretty rusty. You can't see the rest of the chain that's further down, but that stuff actually still looks really good. So I'm probably gonna flip it. I'm probably gonna remove that shackle 
take all the chain, pay it out, and then bring it back up with the new side onto there. I might even maybe cut half of it and get half new. I can see how much new chain costs here because it does fit my Gypsy windlass, but it doesn't fit it great. So it would be great to just get a better chain. The thickness and the weight of it is really good though because I am pulling it up by hand, so that worked out well. The anchor itself, I love it. I love my Vulcan rock nuts, so that thing's great. Uh, one thing I did break this year is this little bit down here, and I had to try to fix it maybe five or six times, and I didn't quite get it, but the piece is like 50 bucks online, so that'll allow me to actually properly furl this in. The furling line I also changed, and I screwed the pooch on that. I made it about 10 feet too short, which is bad for a number of reasons, so I'll just need to redo that. So this is Corrosion X. Um, because I am gonna be leaving for a few months, there's probably gonna be some rust stain going down my bow because the chain will just be in there rusting away a little bit. So I'm gonna try to give it this spray of this stuff. Corrosion X is one of those insanely useful things to keep on a boat. You can spray it on pretty much everything, including electronics, like actual electrical components, and it helps prevent the rust. So before leaving here, Obviously this isn't like the best way to be doing this. Ideally I should be paying it out down to the bottom, letting it rest down there, but I'm kind of short on time and honestly I might end up just getting a new chain anyway, so no big deal. Next thing I want to take a quick look at is my standing rigging. I did notice a little bit of rust kind of coming out and that's always been doing that since I've owned the boat. I've never been able to actually find it, so it's kind of coming from in here. I would say I probably got another two years before I need to look at replacing my standing rigging. Something I'll probably want to do in like Guatemala or somewhere where I can get it done much cheaper. So we're going to keep moving on our way back here, looking at everything else. Now the sails I'll talk about inside because that's where I have them right now. But looking back inside here at the cockpit, I got one last thing which is my cockpit cushions. These were, oh god what is that? <laughs> these are getting way dirtier now than they ever did before. But basically these were like brand spanking new because uh, I had them made. I used one inch thick yoga mats. And then a friend and a follower, a fan of mine on my page helped me sew them. This whole cockpit probably would have cost me around two to $2,500 to have it professionally done. Instead, they helped me do it and I was able to do it for about, I think $200. And it cost me like 250 because I ordered twice the material that I needed, but that worked out because then I gave them the material as a thank you. So everybody really won in that. But I can't stress just how good all of this really is. Um, we're also gonna take a quick look underneath here, if you guys have seen my other boat tour video, you know that I did this little special modification. If you've seen my boat tour video before, you'll know that I added this to give me an extra little dive locker, as well as a great space to keep the freezer. I just love having the bed. The boat bed is amazing. For a boat this size, really, really hard to beat. Also, I was able to keep a freezer in here, like I was just saying, and I made that thing as well insulated as possible. And look at that, I've got a big bag of ice somebody gave me for my sprained hand um, that I'm getting use out of, as well as ice cream and fish, everything. And this has just been phenomenal. Um, it uses very, very little electricity because it's such a new thing. My refrigerator inside the boat uses a ton of electricity, so we'll get to that one in a little bit. But now we'll take a look down here to the infinity locker. So I've got quite a few things in here. We open this up. So the infinity locker is what I call this space down here. and. It just does such a great job. I keep all my kite gear, my bicycle, sub wing, foil board, uh, rake, uh, slack line, tow rope, aerial silks, you name it, it's down here, including my water maker, which is really, really hard to see, but it's down in there. But having a water maker drastically changed what I do, uh, or how I can sail and cruise on the boat. I use the Seawater Pro. I really strongly recommend, if you're looking at getting a water maker, talk to them. They're great and a lot of the parts you can find somewhere else after you used it or you can use a similar one but they really have a great product and it just it's just it's just super reliable. There's nothing really to say about it. Welcome down below into Adventure Born. Obviously there's a lot of damage that got done on the outside. Minor stuff but still happened. Uh, wear and tear. You know what that also obviously happens here on the inside of the boat. So let's take a look at a few things. Why don't we start with the bathroom first, the head of the boat. Everything in here was actually pretty good. The toilet I'm sitting on would be one of the things though that did get a little bit, little bit of damage. One of the valves in here or one of the flappers I think started to get kind of weak so it could kind of back flood up a little bit. It's really no worries because I get a brand new toilet every year. That's $150 for a toilet. I undo a few bolts, I undo a little you know stinky smelly line and hose clamp it back on and I'm done. 
So that's how I handle that situation. Moving on to the editing station. I spend most of my time right here making all the adventure content that I do. You know what? It takes a ton of time, a ton of work. I can't stress that enough. No video of mine that shows my lifestyle is accurate, really, because I would say half of my waking hours are spent probably right here just to make content for you all. So give me a little bit of love if you can. It's, it's definitely a full-time job. I do enjoy what I do, but yeah, it's a lot of time here. So obviously the chair got a little bit more damage this year. The table held together well. Um, everything else in here actually held together well, except for, funny enough, and these get kind of specific, my laptop. This is my third year now on this laptop. This uh, USB port just went out the other day, and in general, it's getting quite a bit slower. The saltwater environment is not good for electronics, is the bottom line. I have other, you know, a lot of times I'll be onloading and offloading footage with a little USB, um, you know, adapter, putting the SD card into here. And even the connections on this, I can tell are getting a little bit weaker. Or maybe it's the laptop itself where its SD card adapter is getting a bit weaker. But either way, um, I already plan to upgrade anyway to a bigger, faster laptop as well as it being newer. So I'll have all my USB ports again that I can be using. Uh, some of my other electronics also suffered this year as well. I ended up breaking, I think, two GoPros this season. One of which was on my head when I, you know, I'll just roll the clip. Hope you guys enjoyed that little video. That's always a cool thing to look back on. And that's the type of stuff that I want my boat to be able to put me in places to do. And the water maker and the lithium and the solar all help to keep me out there longer. So the whole way I've designed this boat and my lifestyle is very important to me. Uh, now as well, besides that GoPro that was on my head that then got destroyed, I think I destroyed another one this year. My dedicated DSLR is getting slower and slower and less and less good. So probably changing that somewhere pretty much wraps up everything in here. My LED lighting system, I think I replaced that once this year. It took me about 10 minutes to do this. I absolutely love it though, just the way it spreads all the lighting out. Moving on to the galley, I don't think anything got really damaged this year. I don't think I really added a whole lot either. It's very simple. So galley's looking good. Um, real quick from here, I'm gonna move into the engine. Only about a month ago that I have my first ever problem with my engine. Can you tell me anybody else who's gone four and a half years without having a single engine problem? I was thrilled. Uh, that'll have to be its whole own video episode, but basically there was some corrosion through the exhaust manifold that leaked out all of my coolant and would continuously be doing that. It would just drain the coolant into the exhaust. Um, thankfully, I was able to fix that with epoxy. I used a, uh, it was a type of uh, quickie weld metal JB weld epoxy. And that held great all the way down here. I'm gonna hopefully be taking a look at that before I leave, but I've talked to quite a few people and some people have just left it like that because the epoxy can't, can't corrode like the metal can. And the way the heat exchanger is designed, it's just a poor design because it's mixing very closely all of the heat, the exhaust, and the salt water. You know, well, it's water and salt, I guess you say. And those are, well, and there's pressure as well. Those are really bad things for a uh, corrosion. So I did have some problems with that. Other than that, my engine has just been purring like a kitten. Um, and I did use it quite a bit, especially to come up here. You gotta remember, I did the thorny path. And I had to use the engine quite a bit for long duration. So I'm very happy all of that worked out for me. Uh, moving further back into the aft cabin. <sighs> So I sleep most of the time in the aft cabin. Sometimes I sleep up in the V-berth and it's kind of nice to be able to change it around because I've got like the V-berth, the aft cabin, the C-berth, and then outside, and sometimes a hammock and the cockpit. So like five places I can sleep around the boat. It's pretty nice. Really probably taking the least amount of damage. Uh, I added in this, actually I think I added in both these. No, I added in just this one um, this past season, and this Multi Plus by Victron is just amazing. These two have just been performing. These are my solar charge controllers. They help change the uh, voltage and the amperage from my solar panels to better match my batteries so they can charge up my batteries. That system has been great. I just don't need to mess with it. I do look at my batteries fairly frequently, and I'll show you right now. I use 
an app on two different tablets so I can look at each battery bank pretty seamlessly. Uh, and here's what it looks like right now. So you can see I'm taking in about 20 amps and that's gonna be per each. So I'm taking in 40 amps right now at 12 volts, well, 13 volts, 14 volts, let's call it. Uh, so that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice that I'm getting that kind of juice in there. It usually gives me a reasonably detailed, a reasonably accurate amount of um, amp hours remaining, but that sometimes can be a little bit off. It normally does this where it shows the batteries all over the place and it's never really been a problem. It's definitely annoying that it doesn't just show it as like, hey, we're good. I'm not quite sure what that is, but that's one of those things where it's like, hey, does it work? Does it always work? Cool, like, don't stress about it. Again, I'm just gonna say it for the millionth time, a boat is meant to be used for fun. It's meant to be used for excitement and adventure. And if you're spending your time, like, worrying about all these things, like, especially when you don't have to, you're not gonna have a good time. So, the aft cabin, nothing really has changed in here. Um, nothing really that I can think of. It's obviously a little cluttered right now, because I'm just about to leave the boat to fly away, so. Moving on, oh, I will say one thing that kind of got damaged this year was the refrigerator. There is some sort of a leak in the R-134A coolant, and that has been a bit of a pain this year. It feels like I got it plugged up because I haven't had to refill it in like two or three months. So we'll see how that goes. Now onto the salon. Um, yeah, really not a whole lot to report here. Obviously, I have my sales in here. So now I'll talk about my sales. I completely tore my mainsail this year, completely. Um, thankfully, I actually already had my mainsail from Precision Sails, so we can get that correctly in there. They sent me this brand new mainsail, and I absolutely love it. I was able to reef it, able to get a lot of good use out of it as I came from St. Martin down. Now, I really wish I got on this a little sooner, so I would have had it from the Bahamas through the thorny path. That would have made a huge difference. But my old mainsail, which was literally older than I am, managed to hang on long enough um, and tore literally the last sail that was just a pleasure sail anyway. I just kicked on the motor and that was that. Now down here I do have my jib and my jib is a gift from my good friend Jay. Jay uh, and I did a boat tour of his boat which you can check that out on my channel. Great boat tour, great guy. So he gave me his old jib and I've definitely got as much use out of it as I can. I think I had it restitched in Luperon but I need to get a new jib. So I'm gonna be talking about precision sales because a brand new sale from them for both main and jib would be outstanding. Got my battens back here. Uh, so no damage to this this season, but the jib is definitely falling apart. I mean, like, I think I might be able to make it back up to St. Martin probably, but then I really gotta look at getting a brand new jib. I really do. And that's pretty much it. The cushions still look decent. I could definitely be treating this and maybe bleaching or whatever I need to do. Or maybe there's someone here who can help me with it. But all in all, I'm not too worried about it. The salon's doing well. Up into the V-Birth now. The V-Birth really didn't suffer anything. I think, yeah, I've got to just replace this one LED strip. The other one's still going, so no big deal there. But yeah, nothing else really to report in here. So I hope this gave you guys a clear look at the sort of minor damage that you can accrue during a full year of sailing and cruising. I think this is a cool concept to go over and let people know. I'd be curious to see other boats and what damages maybe they accrued throughout the year or other boats that maybe didn't do as much and had little to no damage. I can't imagine that nothing would break. That would be very unrealistic to think about. I think there's a lot of lines that could chafe. That's another major thing that happens. I did actually chafe through at least one or maybe two of my dock lines this year. No big deal, I've got literally a whole locker full of rope and I can just use that. But it is worth noting though that, yeah, you're gonna break stuff when you go out sailing. And I wanna emphasize that to you guys, that a boat's meant to be used. It's not meant to be this like, I mean, sure, some people have these like crazy, nice, pretty boats, but use your boat. Don't just let it sit someplace and wax it and have it be this like piece of artwork. Like actually use your boat, go out, have experiences, meet new people, go to new places, like sail the seven seas. And that's exactly what I'm doing because in my mind, like obviously I would love, you know, when I'm done with my boat one day to, to sell it and then be able to use that money for something else. But if I sail this boat into the ground, I'm totally happy with that. This is what I want to be doing. And I don't want to be delaying or tiptoeing through life because I'm afraid of breaking something. Things break, you learn to repair them, you become better because of it, and then you move on and you get out there. And you've got that sense of accomplishment. I absolutely love it. So yeah, that'll about do it for me here on Adventure Born. I hope you guys learned something and I'll see you on the next adventure. Thanks for joining me on this adventure. I hope you feel inspired to begin adventures of your own. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. 
for an exclusive in-depth look at this adventure lifestyle and to further support my channel, become a member of my Patreon crew. Link in the description. I'll see you on the next adventure. Thank you.